All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to fi No Final Bell. Jesus, I almost botched that already. Um, but, yeah, so we are on the road to Forbidden Door. Of course, we're going to be talking about all the events that have happened um, so beforehand. Of course, you know, we first just... First and foremost, though, usually we start with, like, Impact or ROH or something like that before AEW talk. Here's the thing. I was watching Impact, and the opening segment is too long to even talk about. It was it lasted like a good like eighteen minutes or so, and I'm like, yeah. At that point, I'm like, there's too much to digest with it. There's really like it was kind of on like it was kind of unimportant anyways because all it did was set up the main event. Yeah. So. It, it kind of seems like going forward that we may just talk about AEW stuff. We might incorporate Impact as well. Maybe I still would like to, but if it's just gonna be like a lot of you know segment work, like segments like that that just take way too much time, then I'm not gonna bother. Right. But, um. I mean. We'll just have to see what happens next on uh, next week's episode of Impact. I'm, we're not talking about it because by next week we'll only be talking about Forbidden or you know unless we like we're still kind of trying to figure out what we want to do for next week's episode. But ultimately, it's going to mainly... Be... I think it's just going to be Forbidden Door. It's going to be a lot to talk about in, in the experience of it. It would be cool to talk about, you know, Dynamite and Collision as well. But it, it's just going to be a lot of building up into cool Forbidden to, Door. It would be cool to just talk about, like, our experience being there for Collision. Yeah, that, that's, that we can talk about. But as far as, you know, what like happened... recapping everything. Yeah. We're not really going to recap uh, Collision. It would just... We would just mainly be talking about our experience but right overall it'll be a recap of forbidden door um so other um than that yeah we're gonna go on to uh diamond and, and collision AEW this week mm -hmm, from last week as um adam cole and mjf face off against each other in the AEW world title eliminator and i thought maybe adam cole would be the first one to be able to actually win it. Well, um, I didn't even realize that it was a 30-minute time limit. I thought maybe it was going to be a 20-minute time limit, like usual other matches in Dy you know, Dynamo, unless it's not for a cha unless it's for a championship, except for the TBS and the TNT titles, which are 20-minute yeah, time those are, limits. Those are standard 20-minute. But um, this one was an interesting one. This one. Lasted the whole entire 30 minutes. It was a banger of a match between Adam Cole and MJF. Um, you know, tables were used. You had the pile driver on the the side of the apron type of thing. You, you know, you had these two men going at each other in a great back-and-forth match. Um, of course, we'll talk about the whole thing with the Eliminator Tag Team match afterwards. But this for this match itself... Um, Adam Cole showcased that he can possibly oh, be a future go. world champion in AEW, and he can go when it needs to be happening. I mean, I look at it this way. Adam Cole has been a world champion practically everywhere he's gone. Right, well, except for... Well... Except for main roster WWE. I mean, well, NXT, if yeah, you want to consider but, that, I mean, he was the NXT champion, the world champion. Still a world title. True. Um, grateful that, you know, he didn't amount to go into the main roster because he would have just been a joke. He would have been Keith Lee's manager, which very, I mean, there's unfortunately, really no truth to that. Yeah. But... but let's be honest, he wouldn't have been seeing really too much of the light of day. He maybe could have gotten close to a championship or a few championships I mean, this time, but. I comment about, like, oh, uh, you know, Vince, like, Vince McMahon said that you don't have top guy material that could potentially be true because Vince always had his 
ideal, like, you know, what makes a top guy. But at the same time, it's like, you wouldn't, you, we don't really know for sure how the main roster would have treated Adam Cole. Right. But obviously, um, Adam Cole decided to write out his contract in WWE until he signed with AEW and then, you know. Right. But ultimately, um, right when Adam Cole dropped, you know, the boom and was going for the, the one, two, three. Yeah. It took a little bit of time for the ref to kind of really start coming mm-hmm. in the pen. It went to two, and then you heard the bell ring for a time on a draw. Um, so, fortunately, Adam Cole is not going to get perfect, a future, though, man, because, future like, title opportunity. Even on um, the current... Yes, we we are recording Wednesday after Dynamite just got off the air. So All the matches have been announced for Forbidden Door, by the way. Yes. Yeah, so, and Collision. So, we can probably talk about that a little bit, too. But... Um, as far as, you know, this goes, it, it, you know, Adam Cole was even trying to get a rematch. MGF says no. But now, with this uh, blind tag the team. Blind Eliminator. Blind Eliminator tag team tournament um, for future shot at the tag team titles. How funny is that? That Adam Cole and MGF are, have gotten paired together. They are. Going to be it, competing in that tournament to get a future tag team title opportunity. Now, when it starts, it knows? could start after Forbidden Door. For all we know, it's, it's probably it's what's going to be. Going to. Um. So, yeah, and then we got the Owen Hart tournaments for the men's and the women's yeah. side that are going to be starting with Rampage, which is going to be seen on on Friday, and also. Collision, Forbidden yep. Door, uh, the next Collision afterwards, and and Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and Dynamite. So, um, it, it's going to be really pretty much a um, couple week event, which is yeah. fine. Um, personally, Marty, if we had to choose who could be the one of you know the side for the women's and the men's, I I think the women's is pretty women's much have. It, it's pretty much guaranteed that it's going to be Sky, Sky Blue. Blue, just the way that they've been pushing yeah. her to the moon. I mean, she's already showcasing that she could be a future women's champion. And honestly, yeah. I, I'm all for it. Um, who I personally like to see come back soon and get the, the title way before Sky Blue does. I, I think that she deserves it because it's a title that she never lost. Truly, really. she Thunder had to Rosa. relinquish it because of injury. It's Thunder Rosa. If you think about it, both the men's and the women's have champions that have come back on collision. Yeah. That have never truly lost their respected titles. They had to relinquish them. Of course, CM Punk with the injury Although, and the suspension. Uh, yeah. Thunder Rosa with the injury. Which lasted a little bit longer than she probably wanted it to. I was just about to say, although we don't really know... Like, she's been super discreet about um, the injury that she even has. Mm -hmm. And even how long, like... Because, you know, she got that injury and then it's like... Because, I'm just going to say this now. You don't just have her go into the locker into the back with Tony Khan. Right. Yeah. And not eventually utilize her. I, I, I get it. You know, I would think that she would be coming back after Forbidden Door. I get it. You can't really just thrust her into coming back into that title picture right away. Um, I was kind of shocked about, speaking of the women's um, side, I was kind of shocked that Willow and Tony Storm kind of got announced. For that match, I figured that maybe, you know, that title would be on the line. Well, which but one? The Women's World Championship, but I the was AEW thinking... The Women's World? I think it is on the line. You no, know, it is. Yeah. I was shocked that Willow, Nightingale, and Tony Starr are facing off for it. And not like, I don't know. Um, well, think about it, because Willow is representing New Japan as the strong women's champion. Mm-hmm. True. So, 
technically there is like a you know New Japan and yeah, yeah. true. So but I do see your point. It's like it too bad it couldn't have been somebody like uh I don't know, like I don't something. I mean, I don't know. For... I mean, granted it probably could have been Mercedes Monet if she wasn't uh currently injured. I so... know. It, it it does suck and I feel like that was Probably the, the plan, initial initially plan. Initially for Mercedes Monet was actually Soraya, but she's also currently MIA. What Soraya? Yes. Hmm. So. Yeah. That, uh, you know, but ultimately, I feel like there are still big plans in place for whatever. Right. Well. Let's get back on track here. Um, so, Sammy Guevara is out in the ring. Um, it was an interview with Tony... Schiavone. Tony yeah. Schiavone. Um, and then Sammy Guevara says it's been one been a hell of a ride these past couple of months. Uh, he's experienced the highest of highs and he's experiencing the lowest of lows by coming so close to becoming the world champion and falling short. Uh, the goal has always been the same and it's going to be be so much better because he will have his wife on his side and have his baby girl in one arm and a world title on the other. Uh, says before that happens, he's got to make some tough decisions and some changes here in AEW. And then out comes Darby Allen and wants to talk about Double or Nothing. Says he wants to start the bomb, but wants to talk about Sammy. Um, he says something about how um, I'm not out here to get a you know have a rematch for the world championship i know i lost i'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up but i really want to talk about you sammy um a derby asked says i don't know if you know but sounds like the people are starting to love you again which it doesn't seem like that well <laughs> you want to know why because i don't have to be forced to seeing him making out with freaking uh ty Mello every single damn week because that got is fucking annoying after a while i mean hate to say it well, not to mention, they're all, like, I feel like, I feel like the thing with that is it was kind of like a premature, uh, face turn for Sammy, because, like, people are ultimately happy to see that, like, he's starting a family with Ty. Right. I think that's what it is, but I could be wrong. I mean. Who knows? Well, not to mention, I feel like people are also, like, I mean, people have known that for a long time with Sammy. But I feel like now it's actually starting to get the recognition that it deserves. And what I mean by that is, like, I think people are actually, like, respecting Sammy's work in the ring and with his, like, promos and everything. So, and like I said, I think people have already, like, have not already, people have always known that. But, like I said, I think it's finally getting the recognition. I think it's actually starting to get the recognition that it deserves. Right. But I mean, um, so Darby asks, are you going to stand on your own two feet, or are you going to stand in the shadow of the JAS? Um, Darby says the difference between him and Sting is that they view each other as equals, and says they are, they there, are it, Sting there isn't any Sting Appreciation Society. Uh, Darby says Sammy doesn't need to answer his question right now, but he might know the answer. Then out comes Chris Jericho and wants them to shut his music off. Says to Darby Allen that he needs to stand there and shut his mouth and mind his own business to stop laughing. Adam, kid. Uh, it's just Jericho and Guevara, and he's been meaning to ask him a question the whole three months he's been chasing MJF for the World Championship. He never called Jericho once, and never asked Jericho to help him out. Um, his mentor, the one that brought him in, um, he says, I am, you know, I'm not, I'm your mentor. I'm the one that brought you into AEW, the guy that made him into a star. And Sammy asked for Chris's help. He would be standing here right now as the AEW world champion. Sammy says, that's funny because he asked, why didn't he call him? Because maybe if you did, you wouldn't have lost to Adam Cole twice. Uh, Chris says that Sammy might be having some delusions of grandeur here. Grandeur. 
uh, here brush in the main event two weeks ago, and Chris says uh, he will give Sammy another chance of going to tell him to apologize to Chris right now. Sammy says he's not apologizing for shit. Uh, Chris says maybe he needs to, uh, to remember the dynamic of the JAS. Maybe he needs to know the hi hierarchy. Maybe they need to reunite the lay sex gods and have a tag team match next week so Sammy will know who his boss really is. Darby steps in and says, Match, you call yourself a wizard, right? And says, when he steps in the ring, the magic is gone. Uh, Chris asks, you sure you want this? You're a Rhodes mutant. You sure you want the match against Chris Jericho all by himself? Maybe Sammy and myself should beat the living hell out of you right here, right now. Two on one. Darby says, I'm not really alone. And then out comes Sting. What does this mean? Well, we got ourselves a, um, a six-man tag team match that is going to be happening at uh, Forbidden Door. Um, where, oh, actually before then it was a match on, um, Dynamite, it was a trios match, it was Minoru Suzuki, Sammy Guevara, and Chris Jericho facing off against A.R. Fox, uh, Darius Martin, and Action Andretti, right? Yeah. Yes, okay. And then, of course, you know, you had the team of Chris Jericho, Minoru Suzuki, and Sammy Guevara win, it looked like Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho were sort of on the same page, but let me tell you something. That shit is not going to happen at Forbidden Door. Sammy Guevara is going to be the reason that um, Sting, Darby, and whoever their tag team partner is, is going to be announced on Collision, so we will talk about that. Um, whoever, you know, I, I think that Sammy Guevara is going to be the real reason why that their trio loses in that match. I think he's going to turn on Minoru Suzuki and Chris Jericho and, you know, go on his own because even in the match on Dynamite, which, you know, just happened, Sammy Guevara didn't look like he really wanted to tag the Chris Jericho. He was helping him out a little bit in the match, but he, he when he went for the tag, he tagged in Minoru Suzuki instead of Chris Jericho. Hmm. So there's some yeah. tensions there. I think uh, I think Sammy might eventually break off from the JAF. He needs to. I was gonna say he needs. He's to. He's way bigger than the Jericho Appreciation Society. I mean, not for the nothing. The Jericho Appreciation was... Society needs Sammy Guevara. Sammy Guevara does not need the yeah. Jericho Appreciation Society. I mean, to be fair, it's kind of like what happened with Sammy Guevara in the Inner Circle when he was TNT champion, because like. While he was TNT champion, he still technically was part of the inner circle. Right. And then, like, it seemed like he was, uh, like, even then, it felt like he was bigger than the inner circle. And, like, he didn't need that group when he was the TNT champion. <clears throat> right. So, exactly. You know, so... But now that he's seemingly moved on from the mid-card division, and now that he's basically, at this point, a main eventer, or at least on, like, main event status, mm -hmm. he's definitely bigger than the JAS. Right. He doesn't need it. No, he, he doesn't, and honestly, I think that, as much as it kind of maybe pains me to say this, I think that he could be a future world champion in the, in the company as well. I mean, I think he's got enough skill and whatnot to be a future world champion. Oh, he's definitely got enough skill world to be champion. A world champion. Um, I don't know how maybe the fans will see him as such. I mean, because they kind of like have a love-hate relationship with Sammy right now. Honestly, I'm yeah. not opposed with Sammy. Yes, it got annoying with the whole thing with him and Ty Mello. Yes, it did get annoying with yeah, that. Yeah, I mean... Grant, and I know. can see why people were booing him and didn't like him for that. They but didn't now, like his character. Now that he's kind of on his own and doesn't really have that too much to worry about... Um, I think that pushing him as like a main event kind of star would be nice. Um, I, I, I wish that Darby Allen could still be there, but honestly, you guys think I would love the, for them to kind of push them as a tag team more. I get his thing as like per appearance kind of wrestler right it now. It seems like he's a kind of a per appearance, but I mean. But again, you know. Well, you have to factor in. It, it, it would make a lot of sense if he is like with for him to be a per appearance because 
he's also like 63, 64 years old. He kind of, you know, he's kind of going to, he's got to count, like not necessarily count his days, but at the same time, he's really got to take care of himself at right. the end of the day. True. And in, in the ring and everybody else around him have to take care of him. So. Right. So, yeah, Sonata is putting out the open challenge for his IWGP World Championship and is waiting for somebody on the AEW to step up and accept the challenge. But it ends up happening to be Jungle Boy Jack Perry. So, yes, for Forbidden Door, we are going to see Sonata put his IWGP World Heavyweight Championship on the line against Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Um, Who who do you got going on for that match, honestly? I, would I think, think it's going to be a very back and forth contest, but I don't see Sonata giving. No, up I was going to say IWGP. I don't see Jungle Boy being a world champion just yet. I um, mean, I look at it this way: at least like, not in IWGP. I was going to say it, or like, New Japan. It would kind of, it would kind of, um, not necessarily like um, denounce. I was going to say, if nobody the understands... But at the same time, it's like, eh. Right. It kind of would. If because it, just look at the laundry list of people that have held the IWGP. And then it's like, if you were to give it to Jungle Boy, it would be like, oh, okay. I mean... Right. If, if nobody I understands... I deserves it. But at the same time, no, he really doesn't. True. So... If nobody understands what IWGP stands for, it's the International, International World... Wrestling Grand Prix. Yeah, Theory. yeah. Exactly. So, um, personally, I, I think that this is going to be a lot better of a match that people are saying. People are already claiming it's going to be a mid of a match and that Jungle Boy is not going to be able to compete he, with Sonata. I, I look at it this way. I think Give the match a chance. Really? Because, let me tell you something. That man put on some great matches as a singles guy, let alone he's Jungle been Boy a tag world. team. You know, let alone, you know, he was great as a tag team guy way before it, as an interv- you know, um, singles guy. But let me tell you something. He's put on some banger of matches as a singles competitor. Um, if if anybody wants to see, for instance, look at the Fatal 4-Way matches recently oh, yeah. at Double or Nothing. Um, you know, some other great matches that he's, you know, competing on. Um, I get it. You know, he hasn't been impressive so far, maybe, in the singles run, but He's done enough to really showcase his talent that's as a another, late... That's another example of, like, give it time and give it a chance. Right. Um, but do I see him getting the victory here in Forbidden Door? I, I Absolutely not. No. no. Um, like I said, though, I still think it's going to be a great match. It's just I don't see... Right. So winning. we get Sting, Darby Allen, Keith Lee, and Orange Cassidy facing off against the Mogul Embassy. Um, All four members. Yeah. So, um, ultimately, with this, uh, you know, Sting, Darby Allen, Keith Lee, and Orange Cassidy do get the win on Mogul Embassy. Um, then, um, the Guns say they don't have any relationship with Bullet Club, which I think that's a bullshit lie, because, um... Okay, collision. Uh, look at Collision going into Toronto here. It's going to be a eight-man tag team yeah. match between Bullet Club CMFDR Gold and Ricky Starks. So yes, Bullet Club, Bullet Club and the Guns in the match between the Guns and the Hardys. Bullet Club Gold did um, interfere in the match to help the Guns beat the Hardys. So they were kind and of returning the off, favor. And they wrote off Jeff Hardy. Because of the fact that the man has felonies in, what did they say? He has felonies and can't appear in other countries? Yeah, unfortunately, that's how that rolls. They they don't want any kind of felons in other countries. And it's not, it's understandable. Um, It just sucks that you can't really see him yeah. for a majority of like a month because they're right. Yeah, mostly Dynamite and Rampage. Or Dynamite well, Rampage Dynamite, and... Dynamite and Collision. Dynamite and Collision are going to be majority in, uh, in, Canada. in Canada for majority of June slash July. Yeah. So, um... Next time they're appearing, like, in the States. Or, well... Is that to, like, yeah. North North and South Carolina, which are the home um, states of the yeah, Hardys, so, so... Jeff Hardy will get that nice hometown reaction. 
yeah, hopefully he doesn't do anything stupid. I mean, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, 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 I do say that, you know, it, it's, it's bullshit that they don't have any working relationship with Bullet Club Gold. And then say that they want to talk about themselves and claim they are the best tag team, the best brother tag team. It says they had their eyes on uh, one brother tag team, Team Extreme, and want to tag, uh, take them on later to, you know, later on. Um, well, well, they did, and we just talked about it, so, um, unfortunately, the guns did get the victory with the help of Bullet Club Gold, so, yes, we are going to get an eight-man tag team match. It's going to be, um, what is it? It's going to be the guns. Yeah, CMFTR and, and Ricky Stark versus Bullet Club Gold and the guns. Yeah, see, it, it's kind of weird because it should have been the Hardys and part of that eight-man tag team, but I can see why they can't because of Jeff Hardy. Yeah. But Jeff I, Hardy's legal situation. Again, I, I think that Matt Hardy should have been one of the men that be in it. But it I, get it. I get it. I get it with CM Matt Hardy instead of Ricky Stark. I, I can understand. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Is that like Ricky Stark's? I understand with the whole rivalry, but I thought that was done kind of horrible. But I guess not. Um, we all nah, know with you know CMFTR. Huge man. They got a play. That, they got to let that shit run its but course. But again, with everything that already GAF just happened with like, the Guns and the Hardys, um, I would hope that after everything with. Uh, Diamond and Collision being done with their Toronto uh, Canadian tour. I don't think Dynamite's not supposed to be in Canada as long as Collision. Collision, like almost every single yeah. Saturday, yeah, is gonna be Hamilton, Hamilton Calgary, Calgary. Like, like that's what I'm saying. They're gonna be majority in they're Canada. Pretty much, in a way, they're pretty much going to like every major province in Canada. Personally, I don't think the guns... I wouldn't be surprised if it. For one of those collision shows, they're going to Nova Scotia. Uh, uh, no, they're not. Um, I know they're going to Ontario. They're going to Alberta. But let um, me say, say this now. Um, I will. I do like what they're doing with the tag team division right now. They're kind of spicing it up with you know you got the Hardys, you got the Guns, you got the bull, you know Bullet Club Gold that yeah. want the. Tag, tag team titles. You got FTR in there. Let's just say the tag team division in AEW is uh, a okay for right now. Yes. Um. So yes. Um. We're gonna not really gonna talk about this too much. Uh, Wardlow does beat uh, Jake Hager to retain the TNT Championship on Dynamite, but unfortunately, we'll talk about yeah. what happened on Collision. Yeah. Um. So Hiroshi Tanahashi throws out the challenge to the MGF for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship, which is now official for Forbidden Door, but MGF declines and says he might no show and wouldn't be the first time thoughts. Well, unfortunately, Adam Cole convinced him otherwise to show up for the show. He's like, oh, was it because you're scared that he's better than you? You coward. So um, Adam Cole got under MGF's skin, and unfortunately he goes on a show... Puts his hand on his shoulder. Good luck, champ. Because <laughs> he knows Good the luck, kind partner. of he knows the kind of man that Hiroshi Tanahashi is because he was in Japan and knows how to, you know, how he well, can be. Well, not to mention, you know, when you're the ace of the universe, everybody knows how good you are. So yes, um, multiple. But unfortunately, IWGP Tanahashi champion. is gonna see. Just the kind of tactics that MJF can put on. I hate to say it, MJF is guy is going to be walking out with a victory here. As much Although as I would, it would love be to interesting see... to see Hiroshi Tanahashi as the AEW World Champion. I, it just it's just not going to happen. I hate to say it. He would have to he would have to start taking dates from AEW if that were the case. Yeah, he would, um, but. Again, we're gonna we're gonna see that match. I think it's gonna be a great great match. Um, do I think that MJF can get you know the floor mopped underneath him? Oh, he better be better your sweet ass. He's going to, going to, but he's gonna get out gonna wrestled be, by the ace. There's of gonna the be universe. some moment where he steals the victory here. And I'm just calling. Yeah, it. I I was gonna say I can I can expect to see. Like I said, I feel as though MJF will get out wrestled 
by Hiroshi Tanahashi, but at the same time, I can also expect possibly a uh, sneak victory from MJF. Right. He might even he might even get dirty. He might just like be able to distract the referee and get like a low blow or you know use the dynamite uh, dozen ring or something. Yeah, but... I think that he's gonna use some dirty tactics here to retain his championship. So yes, uh, Zack Saber Jr. looks to want the challenge Orange Cassidy for the international championship, and then. Daniel Garcia pushes him aside, saying he doesn't even work here and wants a pure wrestling championship match with Shibata, which I've already called it, and I think it's probably going to be more so happening at uh, Death, Before, Death Dishonor. Before Dishonor in, um, in New Jersey for July 21st. Um, and then Orange Cassidy says Shibata isn't here tonight, but will be, you know. Yeah. And then says how much... They, you know, how about they face off, so, face him and Shibata later to, later on? Well, what happened? With it's that? now if yes. Yeah. So it was a tag team match. It was the Orange tag Cassidy team match. Shibata won. After the match, though, actually, no, no, I, I correct me wrong. Yeah, Daniel Garcia, Daniel and Garcia, Zach and Zack Saber Jr. got the victory over and Orange then Cassidy after the and match, uh, Shibata. What what ended up happening? Uh, uh, who was it? Well, all that, four. Who of... was it that decided to like give Orange Cassidy or no? It was uh, Daniel Garcia was, was say, originally no, was, holding uh, the international championship, and then Zack Saber Jr. And Zack like, Saber Jr. Were, were had it. Like Shibata had it. Shibata, Orange Cassidy yeah. was trying to get his title back, and they were all four holding onto the belt. Well, it's been made official that at Forbidden Door, it's going to be a fatal four-way match for the international championship between. Uh, Katsuyori Shibata, Orange Cassidy, Zack Sabre Jr., and Daniel Garcia. It's going to be one hell of a match for the International yes, Championship. but I'm not ready to see that ugly-ass-looking New Japan World Television title in person. I'm not ready to see it I mean, I in get person. it, but we're going to be it's in the 300, so it's going to be kind of... It's not going to be super easy to I was going to say, unless you have read. binoculars and right. specifically want to look at how ugly that title is... We won't really be able to see it. Right, exactly. Thank God. Yes. Because I do not want to see that ugly title. Yeah, so uh, Tony Storm and Sky Blue face off against each other for the AEW Women's World Championship. Um, and ultimately, you know, Sky Blue did have her mother there for both mm -hmm. Dynamite and, Rant and Collision, as um, Dynamite was in Washington, D.C., and then Collision was in Chicago, in the United States. Uh, in the and... United Center, a sold-out United Center, by the way. Yeah. And, um, so, fortunately, Sky Blue did not get the victory here against Tony Storm, but she does get the one up on her, on them, and, and Collision will talk about it soon. Um, but, you definitely have to know that Sky Blue's turn is going to be coming for the AEW Women's World Championship. It just... It's kind of still early for her to, to get it now, but ultimately, I think once she wins the the Owen Hart Women's Champ Women's Tournament, yeah, which they get a title, they do get a title, I, I, and a trophy, I guess. I mean, there's it's that. Like, uh, it's almost like Braun Strowman when he won the Greatest Royal Rumble, <clears throat> which, by the way, he is still the undefeated champion. But um, ultimately, yeah. Uh, um, before that happens, it, it just she's not gonna win a championship until probably after such. Um, but the thing is, is that even when Adam Cole and Britt Baker won those tournaments, they didn't really amount to anything afterwards. So, it, like, what's the sense of having a tournament like this if it's not gonna amount to anything? I think you should have a tournament. Be like, whoever wins it can get a future title opportunity. Um. Because, fortunately, like, it'll go down to, like, oh, yeah, Adam Cole and Brett Baker are the very first winners, but what did they do afterwards? You know, Britt really I think, didn't I would go after say, the... I think Britt kind of had the more, like, breakout uh, thing after she won, because she started really becoming the face of the AEW women's division. But for Adam Cole, can't really say the same. Yeah, 
Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, what... It took, like, over a year for him to actually, like, get to that. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. we didn't really announce our, our, um, our but picks. But to be fair, he did also have that injury. I, I, I think, you know, the picks were that for this year's. I, I would have to say, like, Sky Blue, either definitely. CM Punk or Ricky Starks for the men's and then Sky Blue for the women's. Yeah. It would it's going to be. come down to that in the finals, I feel. CM Punk versus Ricky Starks. But yeah, in so terms of who who goes over in that match? Ultimately, in Dynamite here, yeah, I was going to say, I, I think it would have to be probably CM Punk that gets over on um, Ricky Starks. And but then... I look at it this way. What does CM Punk have to gain by winning the Owen Hart tournament? I guess more recognition. I don't know. Ricky it would St- only be for that, really. Ricky Starks would have to deserve it a little I, bit more I was going to say, Ricky CM Starks Punk. would, you know... Right. Because if Ricky Starks wins it, then you've got to. You've got to propel him to that main event level. Yeah. If not main event level, definitely, like, you know. I mean, the future definitely looks bright for AEW for their, their stars moving forward, I will say. Um, but, I, like, I, I hate to, like, go there. But at the same time, I look at it as, like, if you're going to give Ricky Starks anything, maybe not necessarily main event. But like upper mid card, right? Um, international title. I would say TNT, but uh, the title is kind of falling off, yeah. and we'll talk about it. Um, that that title is doomed. Yeah. So, you know this this we'll match this this moment does lead into uh, collision. Uh, then after the match, Ruby Soho does beat down Sky Blue. And then out comes Willow Nightingale. What does this mean? Is uh, there be a future mean? tag team match? Uh, yeah, it, there's, it there's going to be a future tag team match. And it happened on Collision. So we'll talk about that. Um, so, yes. Um, Jungle, Hook, Jungle Hook will be there for Forbidden Door. Hook will be in uh, Jungle Boy's corner. Um, good for him. Because he probably need as much emotional support as he can get as he gets his ass beaten down by Sonata. <laughs> Hate to say it. Um, yeah, so the Elite the face off against the BCC. Though, the real question, though, is will Sonata have somebody in his corner? Oh, good. I doubt it. If anybody, it would probably be Ghetto. But even then, like, I don't know necessarily that Ghetto is. Yeah, that. so the Elite and Trios. Um, so it's, you know, of course, the. The Hung Bucks. The Hung Bucks. You no, know, we, we can't say that anymore. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'm still calling him the Hun. The so hun we bucks. got you know you know, Hangman and Page and the Young Bucks against the uh, BCCs, um, John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli, and Wheeler Yuta. Uh, and the for in the the Lee actually got the one up here and got the victory. Um, mm-hmm. And then the BCC beat down the Lee after the match, and then out comes Eddie Kingston, who starts beating down Claudio because of course he does. <laughs> and then John Moxley and Eddie get face to face, and then uh, Kanoshige Takashita beats down, beats everyone down, and then out comes Kenny Omega. They start beating each other down. Then Will Ospreay super kicks Kenny yeah. to make a statement. What Kicked a crazy him moment! Clean in the jaw. Yeah. And it was funny too because that was like a, that, that was pretty much a tribute to uh, Naomichi Marafuji from uh, Pro Wrestling Noah. He he does a lot of those kicks. So, so yeah, so Will Ospreay does not forget the moment that he got embarrassed in the Tokyo Dome. He wants to embarrass uh, Kenny in his own home country of Canada. I think it's gonna happen, man. I think it's gonna happen. I think we're about to see a changing of a guard. But ultimately, I think we're about this to match, see a title this, change this, hands. This, um, the rubber match had had to be in London. Yeah. Where Kenny embarrasses him in front of his own home country of London, England. Um, personally, yes, yeah, so it is a main official. We got five mm-hmm. on five yeah. for Forbidden Door. The Elite versus yeah. the Black Bull Combat Club. Well... So, and by the way, the elite... by the way, I want to make it known that when we and Mar- Marty asked me who do you think that they're, 
you know, he's going to choose. I said Ishii, and guess what? It is made official. It's yeah. Ishii that is joining Ishii. the Elite. As soon as I although, saw... Although, although a lot of people were saying on Twitter, it's like, oh, how much does Eddie Kingston respect Kota Ibushi? And it's like, I didn't even think about that. It's like, man, what if it was Ibushi instead of Ishii? That would have been crazy. Because then we would have had the Golden Elite. But, I, I missed opportunity. I mean, but I look at it this way. Ishii's still a good option, you know? Right. Stone Pitbull. But, I look at it this way too. Is like, man, I'm looking at Ishii nowadays. I'm like, uh, first of all, he's struggling to move. He's getting up there in age. Like, much as I love Ishii, it's like, yeah. I know yeah. that's true. He, he he does look like he's struggling to. He is very much to struggling around, to move but on. he looked pretty good in that moment there. You know, earlier tonight. As a recording on yeah. a Wednesday and uploading uh, Thursday at 5. Usually I know typically it's Wednesday. It's supposed to be Wednesday at 5. But sorry, scheduling conflicts. We did make that post for you guys. So um, hopefully we get you guys watching. Um, you know, watching, watching a episode 85 for us. We really appreciate that. But um, that, that's the end of Dynamite as we're getting into the first episode of Collision, everyone. Yes, well, another well, live two hours. Before we get into that, the only real thing that I would have wanted to talk about for Rampage is uh, the in-ring debut of Aubrey Edwards. Oh, yes, yes. So the main event of Rampage was a mixed trios match between... Mark and Papa Briscoe and Aubrey Edwards taking on Jeff, Karen, Jeff and Karen Jarrett and Jay Lethal. And uh, there, there were a few times where it's like, oh, Aubrey Edwards got tagged in and Karen Jarrett ha- therefore legally has to come in. But there, but basically it just, it was just a bunch of like cowardice of, uh, Karen, where it's like she's running around the outside or whatever, gets back into the ring to immediately tag out to either her husband or Jay Lethal. Right. Therefore, stopping Aubrey Edwards from getting any offense in on Karen. And then the final moment of the match, can, up to the finish. Can we just say that Papa Briscoe, man, even He's with, got some devastating lariats. No. And shoulder tackles. I was going to say, did you see the moment, like, the stuff that he was, like, I know you were watching it, but, man, he was even looking good because he was showing, he showed up for um, the concession stand brawl, which oh, okay. wasn't yeah. really all in the, like, Towards the concession stand, it did lead into yeah. the ring, unfortunately. Well, but Papa Briscoe, man, I tell you what, yeah, that I'm man can put on that, some uh, can put on some moves. Yeah, I'm gonna need to watch that concession stand. Like he choke slammed, um, Sanjay, San, yeah, Sanjay or Jay Lethal through a table, mm. bro. Right, like, <laughs> I was like, damn, okay, Papa Briscoe can fucking wrestle, man. I mean. This man, like, straight up picked up and choke slammed to you lethal. Like, not like not like struggle, like, where it yeah, looked yeah. like he actually legit. Like, of course, you know, Jay Lethal helped him out a little bit. But, man, I tell you, <laughs> maybe, maybe in another life, Papa Briscoe maybe could have been wrestling for like 20, 30 years. <laughs> Who knows? Um, maybe, maybe he's the one who secretly trained the Briscoes. That'd be crazy. You never know. Um, but, yeah. And then, of course, we you know he had Chaos and United Empire, where United yeah. Empire does get, the, yeah. does get the victory over Chaos. Um, it was like, what, Trisha Dora and... Yep. It was Trisha Dora versus Tony Storm? Something like that. I, I think. And then, of course, you know, you had... Um, yeah. Yeah, it was... Yeah, Trisha Torres. Yeah, so, I mean, Rampage does still have that kind of feel where it's, like, going to be a lot yeah, different well, than it I used mean, to be. Think about it, too, because we're getting the first uh, 
match in the women's Owen Hart Cup between Anna JAS <clears throat> versus Sky Blue. Yeah, Rampage so, is not going to be like where it used to be, where you get a lot of the same names. But it's really only you... going to have like one match that sticks out. It feels like. Yeah. Which is kind of sad, but I mean. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, if you really want Rampage to continue being watchable, you should probably have some, still some good matches like it used to. I mean, to, but, to but be fair, it kind of since the first episode, it, it never really got. Like yeah, that. I was gonna say it never really got. There was really only ground. like one. And I feel like there was a main match. I feel like that's the main reason why it's kind of going to push to the wayside yeah. and collisions coming in. I mean, because you think about the first <clears throat> episode of uh, of Rampage, the main match that stood out on that debut episode was Christian Cage versus Kenny Omega for the right in, the TNA and I, Impact. I hate World to title. say it, but like Collision, the very first episode, and we'll talk about it. Oh, it's, it's definitely going to be held to a high. Standard. I was going to say it was a big, huge success for AEW. I mean, not to and mention the way that they're just well booking it now. I tell you, man, not to mention. Um, Collision ended up doing like 816,000 viewers with a very high key demographic. So, for a Saturday night show that aired at 8 p.m., 816,000 viewers, that's still really good. And I mean, they still hit that, that Dynamite, key demographic. Dynamite, yes, and they, will they still were get number that. one on tele, they were number one on cable for the weekend. Well, yeah, like, I mean, there's no other real wrestling I mean, on Saturday. Yeah, but That's like, still, like, Collision is an ultimate success, and it's just the first episode. I know. Oh. AW is really hitting the ground running. Well, um, let's not waste any more time. Let's course. get into that discussion. I was going to say, people better get ready because this is a very long, lengthy promo for CM Punk coming back after 10 months away from the scene. Uh, so, yes, he starts off the night for Collision and says he's tired of being nice. Uh, he's gone 10 months with a ruptured tendon torn straight off the bone, but he's still here. This is the professional wrestling business, the business for grown-ups. This is not a popularity contest because he would have lost it a long time ago. <laughs> um, Punk did all these things and got here to this place, riding the wave, riding the backs of smart Passionate, passionate wrestling fans like us. Uh, says he couldn't have done it without the fans. Says he's. It seems like people hate him for the same reasons people love him. Says he's. His mere presence makes people uncomfortable because he's the truth, and the truth is painful. Boo him, cheer him, love him, hate him. You all do it since you know he's right. He's. He gets called one Bill Phil, but you can call him whatever you want. I own a one genuine article and a business full of counterfeit bucks. Which, uh, that line actually popped the Young Bucks because they ended up putting in their Twitter bio. Uh, back in 2018, we actually, like, what was their bio? I don't even know if they still have that Twitter bio. Um, let me see here. Um, as far as. Oh, no, okay. There, there's. They changed their. Uh, okay, I was they gonna changed say. Their, they changed their bio, but let's take a look at this. Yes, okay, so here I was gonna say, you want a bio, check out the uh, Young Bucks bio Twitter profile. They will have all of them. So uh, this is what the bio it says if it were 2018, we'd already have a quote unquote counterfeit Bucks shirt available on PWT. Laughing emoji, kill it, y'all. So, <laughs> Dave Meltzer, you are wrong in saying that the AEW locker room seems to be divisive after uh, that promo from Collision. Uh, but the king Especially is... Especially if the Young Bucks found it lighthearted. Yeah, but the king is back, baby, and he has a lot of things to get off his chest. Uh, says he will never compromise and, and that there's people that think they are owed an apology and says he's sorry that the only people softer than you are the wrestlers like you. Uh, last time we saw him with his triceps meat hanging down, he held what is in this bag. It's his because he earned it since he won the Doc Collar match. 
Um, this, beca- this belongs to him until someone can paint or submit him for it. Uh, there, there are those of you who are praying that he's going to put his put these boots down in the ring and walk off into the sunset. But until there is somebody in this company that can fill his boots, they belong to Punk. Um, yeah, see, so he did have a red bag, and of course he yeah. had his boots, which I don't think he actually wears in the ring. I could be wrong, because he, he also does. Has... He just they're covered by those kick pads. Yeah, that's true too. Um, but yes, ultimately I think what's in that bag is the AEW World Championship he never lost, and that. Um, I think it's been um, announced for All In that it's going to yeah, be CM Punk. Yeah, it has Punk. been announced for and All MGF. In that it will be CM Punk versus MGF for the AEW World title. I know it's still early, but how do we feel about that match, one? And two, is this when CM Punk wins back the title he never lost? I don't know necessarily that CM Punk is the right kind of person to dethrone MJF. Quite frankly, I mean he did it. He did it. I know before. he did it before. I mean, well, that actually, also wasn't for the AEW World Title. I was gonna say he's beaten MJF before in a dollar collar match, but singly, single handedly, happens to be one of the better matches in AEW. Of course, you know that was still when Wardlow was basically MJF's bitch. Yeah. But then he turned on him and threw the ring to yep. CM Punk to use to beat him down. Yeah, because he was like, oh, uh, he, he looked at MJF. He's like, oh, uh, uh, I can't find it. And then uh, when it was CM Punk's time to, like, take advantage, he was like, oh, I found it. Here it is. Here's that for you, buddy. Use it at your discretion. Use it if you want to. Right. And he did happen to use it and then beat, you know, down... MGF and then, you know, got the victory in the dog collar match. And then ultimately, I, I think CM Punk was the one that dethroned Adam Hangman Page yep. for the World Heavyweight Championship. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, Although it's kind of funny you mentioned that because since that happened, has Hangman ever gotten a true rematch? I don't think so. He he's just been very. He kind of just with... lost it and was like, "Okay, I guess I'm back to being a tag team guy with yeah, the elite." Yeah, I was gonna say he really hasn't gone back to the the singles era, which is all right. I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to him being with the elite. It just, I I, I mean, what are you truly doing? With I look Hangman? at it this way. Personally, I look at it this way though. They finished the story with Hangman. Right. Well, it, Why can't WWE do the same thing with Cody Rhodes? That's true, too. Damn um, it. I mean, I, I, I've stated my frustrations with that multiple different times, and um, I think it's not worth my time to, have to talk about it. No. But um, hopefully AEW is going to have this. hopefully AEW is going to have something with Hangman because, yeah. fortunately, I don't know how true it is, but fortunately the WWE has a lot of interest yeah. in Hangman. Page and um, bidding war for 2024 this. is going to be interesting for a few wrestlers yeah. in AEW. I'll leave it at this. Cody should have won at WrestleMania. Uh, I agree, and I've already stated that. Um, go back and watch the episode that I did by myself, by the way. I didn't really want to, but I did state my frustrations about WrestleMania and Cody Rhodes and everything like that. So go back if you want to and watch that. I give my outtake on it. Uh, Marty never really said his outtake on on that. I did. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Cody so, should have won a mania. It's bullshit. Yeah, I agree. Um, so we're gonna continue on into our yeah. first match of the night for Collision: Luchasaurus facing <sighs> off against Wardlow for the TNT Championship. Poor Wardlow had to put that title on the line twice in one week. Well, one, not to mention one resulted in a victory, and unfortunately, the other resulted in. Um, Christian Cage say, taking the camera out of the the cameraman's hands, bashing Wardlow uh, straight here's to the, the face, breaking the yeah. camera, which is kind of crazy that Wardlow didn't start bleeding afterwards <clears throat> or bleeding himself. Um, well, here's the thing. Wardlow was not 100% focused because on Dynamite beforehand... You didn't put that in the notes, but on Dynamite beforehand, after the match with Jake Hager, 
Christian Cage was on the Tron, and he and him and Luchasaurus beat down Arn Anderson to the point where he was like a bloody freaking pulp. And I feel as though that might be the reason why Wardlow lost. He wasn't a hundred percent foot. Like I'm just trying to find a storyline, you know, reason why Wardlow lost is because he wasn't. You know what I would like to see focused after Arn had been. You know what down. I would be okay with. What if Arn, like, basically is like his son Brock's like manager, and what if Brock somehow goes out there? And somehow becomes a new TNT champion. I would not be opposed to it. I yeah, get it. But I get don't it. Don't Lucha... flip flop the damn title again. I get it. You and know, I really and I really we already don't want... had another flip flop. <laughs> with... I really I I know and I know that sounds bad for me to say it and a lot of people can probably give me uh, crap I, for I it. But I do get what you're saying. But ultimately, I, mean, I think that's the, the, I feel like that's the direction they might be going in. I'm but like yeah, it, it's it's confusing because remember with that because before they beat down Arn, they, they beat, beat down, down Brock, Brock first. Yeah. So ultimately, that's kind of the story that they're telling here is that maybe yeah. Brock is going to come out and defend his father and challenge Luchasaurus for the TNT Championship. Yeah, I mean, but like. You know, it's conflicting with that. And I get it. People are going to be like, well, yeah. what did Brock do to Earn a Shaw? You hardly see him on TV. Think about the story, though. It makes sense with the story. Because Brock got beaten down by Christian Cage and Luchasaurus. He's coming back to challenge Luchasaurus. Nece- he doesn't necessarily have to win, but, I mean... It would be something. Now, if he does win, then we get another flip flop. I don't the think he's probably going to win, but I think that he's going to challenge the Disorders for the championship. But, I mean, I look at it this way. I wouldn't be opposed. You know what I would doing. find hilarious? Because, you know, Christian Cage in Toronto for Collision is going to address the TNT championship. What if Luchasaurus is a rightful champion, but what if Christian Cage wrestles the matches for for Luchasaurus and claims he's a TNT champion. I, I can see some shit like that. I'm sorry. I can see some shit like that. I mean, I not really for could. nothing, he's already claiming himself to be the TNT champion, and he had, like, that celebration in the ring like he was the TNT champion. Exactly. So, so I can see some crap too like far that. Off. I can see some crap like that. Um, but ultimately, yes, Luchasaurus does beat prove that Warlow to become the, T- the new TNT champion off, off of the distraction for Christian Cage. Um, it wasn't just ultimately the Christian Cage distraction. Um, Luchasaurus did go with a uh, lariat to the back of the uh, Warlow's head and then turn around one, two, three mm-hmm. to become the champion. But ultimately, it was a few off of a few distractions for Christian Cage. Um, Warlow was. Did it kind of have the upper hand? Was trying to do the powerbomb symphony, and then uh, Luchasaurus did choke slam Wardlow, and then resulted into Christian Cage um, bashing him with, in the face with a camera and whatnot. So ultimately, the match itself wasn't all that great, but there were a few other matches that did happen in moments that happened that um, led to what it was. Uh, so QT Marshall. Um, says Powerhouse will be in the Owen Hart tournament and ultimately win it. I didn't even think about that. I don't think he's I didn't win even it. think about I totally I, I and it's bad right. for me to say I almost totally forgot he was in the tournament <laughs> after that announcement became official. Well, here's the thing. I think what could happen... like somebody ended up tweeting it. It's a very distinct possibility for the semifinals. What? Powerhouse the, and Ricky Starks? Powerhouse and Ricky Starks? And Samoa Joe and CM Punk. That nah, that's true. I I didn't even think about that. We have yet to see a single face off between Punk and Joe in AEW. I was gonna say those are probably gonna be the two se- semifinal matches that are gonna happen. Which honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to it. CM Punk and Samoa Joe and and um yeah, hey, that could happen. 
powerhouse and Ricky Starks. I mean, we'll see what happens. But, man, this match was a banger of a oh match. Andrade and Buddy Matthews brought down the freaking house. It's, it, yeah. I felt like Andrade... See, I hate to say it, Tony, but maybe if you just did that with Dynamite with Andrade, you wouldn't be having this whole having to only just use it for Collision. And I honestly, don't get me wrong, I like the way that they're going with Collision. They're having guys, you know, featured heavily on that show. Like, Andrade's a Collision guy. CM Punk's a Collision guy. I like the sense of, like, just having those guys primarily shown on Collision, like, all the time. I'm not opposed to it. But what about Miro? Yes, Miro. Miro <laughs> being the, the well, you know, collision guy, yeah, too. Yeah, but I mean, he's not going to be in Toronto, which kind of sucks. At least that we know he won't be in Toronto. Um, I hope he's in Toronto. But ultimately, nice. yeah, even Andrade and Buddy Matthews, um, it did seem like Andrade was hurting a little bit. And I don't know what might have been the moment. I think it was the moment where he kind of did that, like, backflip off of, you know, the the apron where he kind of banged up his shoulder because it seemed like he was holding it in, in pain. He might have also just been selling. I mean, he could have been, but um, he, it looked like... Or, or the same thing when he got, like... Um, <laughs> I, I kind of find that hilarious that he <laughs> Kevin inad- inadvertently he kind of spiked, spiked himself him. on the on the doing like, like a hurricane rana off the barricade. Right, but um, ultimately both men uh brought out moves of their significant others. Um, yes, so Andrade, Rhea Rip or yeah, Buddy, Buddy Matthews did Rhea Ripley submission, and then Andrade did. Charlotte submission the figure eight with the, actually uh, won yep. Andrade the match. Yeah, it did. Um, and then, but real quick, can we just take a moment to appreciate Kevin Kelly and Nigel McGuinness on commentary for Collision? Such a nice touch. They're like they mesh so well together, anyways, because they have commentary history in Ring of Honor mm-hmm. as it is. So, it's a nice touch. Kevin Kelly is such a natural at commentary, and then you have Nigel as his color guy. It's good. It's good. No, it, it kind of feels like, you know, JR and King back in the day. That's how touching I don't know is. if I would go that far, but the chemistry that Kevin Kelly and Nigel McGinnis have is really... Like you can tell, right? They they pretty much mesh off of each other. But um, yeah. So Andrade wants to show respect, you know, towards Buddy Matthews after the yep. match, and then Buddy pushes him away, and then uh, Andrade is trying to you know do it again, and then the lights go off, go black, and the rest of the House of Black are in the ring and beat down Andrade Alidolo, which results in Andrade facing off against. Um, Brody King. Brody King. Yeah. I, I would assume that eventually he's going to face off against Malachi, and we know that, that they've had history with each other too. With, um, I think NXT and main roster too. Yeah. Yeah. So Malachi and well, Andrade have faced off against each other. I don't know so much about like, main roster, but and NXT definitely before. NXT. Yeah. Because that was how, Mal- that was how Alistair's wife got uh, got involved. Well, I say Alistair Malachi. His wife uh, ended up giving him a good old Hurricane Rana into the steel steps. Right. So, so yeah, yeah. So, um, ultimately, he's going to be face, facing off against all of the House of Black. But um, I was going to say, eventually, uh, it's going to be Andrade Alidolo versus Malachi Black on collision. Yeah. Eventually. Eventually. Um, so, finally, a name that we have not heard of or seen of since the days of uh, the TNT rivalry between him and Sammy Guevara back in the day. Uh, Scorpio Sky is back and says that nobody can beat him. He's on another level. Well, unfortunately, if you were on another level, then how come it took you so long to finally be showcased on anything AEW has to offer? Hate to say it. He the, may be on another level, 
but is he on the level of the devil? Well, unfortunately, he's probably going to be my uh, just a collision guy, which honestly I would not be opposed to. Scorpio's guy is one hell of a talent, even as a tag team or singles guy. And I'm kind of grateful, I'm kind of happy that he's coming back in a sense of um, AEW collision. I'm not opposed to it. I, I think that he can be somebody that can be utilized a lot on that show. So congratulations to him, and hopefully he can have some banger matches. Um, fortunately, we got to see this guy in our ring. Uh, Tony Nese is in the ring with smart, Mark's, smart Mark Sterling and says, listen up, being that he is a personal trainer, he cannot sit in the back another minute when all the... All he sees on his screen is a crowd full of the fattest trash that Chicago has to offer. He has some um, good news. He's decided to shut Collision down. And instead, tonight, we're all going to do group training and wants everyone to start doing stretches. And as soon as that happens, the Redeemer, Miro, comes out yeah. and they face off against each other. And Miro beats Tony Nice with a game over and forced them to tap out. Um, and then afterwards we get onto our next match of Willow Nightingale and Sky Blue. Yeah, we talked about that one. You know yeah. how they were, you know, future tag team match. Well, it happened on Collision, and ultimately Willow Nightingale and Sky Blue get the victory against uh, the Outcast Ruby So and Tony Storm off of the Tony inadvertently springs Ruby because Willow kind of banged right into her and sp yeah. started spraying Ruby in the eyes, and then. Uh, this guy hit the code blue and pinned Ruby Soho. Um, it was funny the, because, like, during that match, the all people could really talk about <laughs> was uh, Sky's ass. Oh, yeah. We know. And we're not going to talk about it because we don't get want to get canceled. <laughs> uh, so I'll just leave it at that. Absolutely. Ricky Starks declares himself as... And enter into the Owen Hart Cup tournament and says he will become the next winner. What better place to do that than in Canada? This tournament is absolutely meant for him. Um, he could very well be in the finals and win the whole damn thing. So I'm not opposed to that at all. Um, that's how I'm going to leave it. We talked about it a, a bunch. Uh, so Jeff Jarrett um, faces off against Mark Briscoe in a concession stand brawl. Uh, we already told you who won that win was Mark Briscoe that ultimately got the victory. Um, you know, celebrating there with. Um, he also had help from the best friends, uh, the Lucha Brothers, and also Papa Briscoe. Um, hmm. Even though you thought there was going to be no Karen, there was going to be no um, Jay Lethal, no Sanjay Dunn, no Saddam Hussein. Well, fortunately, yeah, they, they got involved. Um, Karen was the first one to get involved well, because she was course. one of the ladies behind the concession stand. There was Chicago's Hot Dogs stand, huh. which looked like the fakest thing ever honestly <laughs> just something they threw together probably um then again who could who knows i mean not for nothing Karen Jarrett looks like the kind of person to sell you a hot dog <laughs> um and then you know then you know shortly sanjay was the one that pushed mark th into the table made him you know flip into the table hmm. and then um you saw jay lethal and then saw uh sound you know sat in sing and shortly uh trying hmm. to you know get Involved with, you know, trying to attack Mark Briscoe and whatnot. But ultimately, um, yeah, Mark Briscoe gets the win here. Um, I'm sorry, but if it's going to be a concession, concession stand brawl, the whole entire match should be consisting in that area, not leading into the ring, because that kind of just defeats the purpose. I get it, it's no rules, mm. and you can go basically anywhere, because it's kind of like a... Well, I mean, um, I look at it this a way. A locker room brawl. Uh, I was about you know, to say, it kind of reminds you of, like, a boiler room brawl. Because, like, I think even when that first started, I think the premise was, like, it starts in the boiler room, but then you gotta, like, eventually... Uh... Well, no, actually... When the boiler room brawl first started, it was pretty much a race to see who gets out of the boiler room first. Right. That was the, you know, but then I think eventually they turned it into this thing of like, oh, they'll fight in the boiler room, then make it out, and then whoever, like, gets to the ring first and, like, whoever finishes the match in the ring 
I could be wrong, but I mean. Right, so the Acclaim and Daddy Ass are in the ring with Tony Schiavone and say the trio's titles are still not out of the picture and they're about to get back on track. Uh, thoughts? I wouldn't be opposed to them going after the House of Black for those World Trio tag team titles because they got to do something with that division right now because it's kind of like they're focusing yeah. off of that and then focusing more on the tag team, which is not a bad thing, but like you got to focus back on the World Trio. See, that's too. what I was worried about anyways. Mm. Like once they started uh, to really showcase, like once they revealed the trio's titles and then once they crowned the first champions like i i always kind of felt like oh you know here we go we're gonna have more trios in AEW than tag teams and it's like uh, it seemed like that at first and now it's now it's kind of the opposite it's like now they're focusing more on they have so many tag teams that you kind of leave the trios out of it so, well, I mean, but I look at it this way: AEW still has a lot of factions. You know what? I wouldn't so, be opposed to. I wouldn't be opposed to like Mark Briscoe joining up with one of the, you know, tag teams and be forming a trio. I mean, don't get, don't get me wrong. CMFTR isn't, you know, out of the equation for those World Trio tag team titles because you, your tr- World Trio is uh, looks like they're going to be primarily showcased on collision so cmftr aren't you know aren't far off from being um trios champions trios tag champions yeah so honestly if they want to make the trios tag tag team titles primarily collision based i wouldn't be opposed to that i really wouldn't i mean i wouldn't hate it either but at the same time it's like does that mean now that the open house rules don't apply to dynamite? Who knows? Who knows? Um, yeah. Speaking of the main event, we're gonna get onto our main event. We're kind of, kind of, partially because we're kind of, we're kind of over time. Yeah. Uh, CMFTR does get the victory over Bullet Club Gold and Samoa Joe, but ultimately there it was does a not. Pretty interesting exchange though that happened between. Samoa Joe and CM Punk during the match, like, they kind of, uh, they relived their history, and the crowd was, like, eating it up, and then they're pretty much just, like, having a verbal war of words, at which point you can visibly see CM Punk drop an F-bomb, so then they get into a lockup, they, uh, CM, uh, CM Punk and Samoa Joe, Samoa Joe pushed CM Punk over to the corner, from the lockup, and then he, you just see Samoa Joe just lighten Punk up with chops. It's probably some of the stiffest chops I've seen since Gunther. Right. And uh, I was looking at that, and I'm like, ah, oh, yes. Samoa Joe's basically looking at CM Punk saying, like, oh, you thought uh, Hangman was being stiff to you. Just wait until I'm in the ring with you, motherfucker. Kind of thing. So, uh, yeah. That is that. So, right, so uh, that can yeah. conclude this episode of No Final Bell. Make sure to follow us on social media at Cynical Sports. Uh, make sure to check out our other um, content on this channel as we have out of turn four every Tuesday at five and then Sunday morning t- tinkle every Sunday at 9 a.m. Of course, this show typically every Wednesday at five, sometimes maybe Thursday or Friday instead. Um, of course, you want to make sure to you know watch this on uh, YouTube at Tango Sports Entertainment, and also Facebook Watch. As always, everyone, we will catch you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.